update from Wendy Stovall. That's Wendy, common spelling, last name Stovall, S-T-O-O-D-A-L-L. The floor is yours, Wendy. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to give you the latest update on what's going on at Kilauea today. So um, in the lower east trip zone where we've been seeing the, the lava flows and the spattering, we have seen an increase in activity overnight. There are multiple fissures erupting lava. And um, 17, 18, and 20 are the most voluminous producers at this time. And then the rest of them are just doing some minor spattering. Uh, another um, thing that's happened is that we've gotten some chemical analysis done of the lava that came out of Fissure 21. And all signs indicate that we are now seeing magma that came down from the summit and Pu'u'u'u entering into the system. So that is, there's only one sample so far. This is a preliminary analysis, but it does seem like uh, that's what's going on. And that's also reason for us to see this increase in activity overnight. So we expect that this uh, lava will continue to being er be erupted at the surface in probably a more voluminous fashion, just because we now know that there's, or we assume that there's um, magma coming in from the summit storage region. So looking at the summit, so size, after the two ex explosive eruptions happened on Wednesday night and early Thursday morning, seismicity abruptly decreased, but now it's starting to slowly increase. Uh, there's just a steam plume lofting from the summit with some minor ash entrained into it but we do expect to see additional explosions occurring from the summit area. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the update that I've got so far. Great. Thank you, Wendy. Um, next, we're going to have Cheryl Chipman. Cheryl, C-H-E-R-Y-L, last name Chipman, C-H-I-P-M-A-N, with the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Cheryl, the floor is yours. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Um, kind of the same conditions here at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, and we are, are still uh, having – part of the park is open. I wanted to remind people that the Kahuku unit is open starting today and will be open through Sunday, and the hours are 9 till 3. We will be opening that unit on additional days. We have not yet uh, made that decision what those extra days will going, are going to be. But there is apparently a demand. We have been seeing increased visitors in that area, so we'd like to open that up for the public a little bit more. And in addition to that, our National Park Service rangers will be at the Moku Papapa Discovery Center in downtown Hilo every day until we open again, and that would be from Tuesday through Saturday, and the hours are 9 till 4 down there, and rangers will be giving educational programs at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., and they will be updating people there about the seismic activity here on the summit and also about other National Park Service happenings. That's it for me. Thank you, Cheryl. Next, we'll have John Bravender. John, common spelling, Bravender, B-R-A-B-E-N-D-E-R, -E -E with the NOAA National Weather Service. Whenever you're ready, John. Great. Thank you. Uh, the weather component is getting back to a more typical pattern for this time of year with strengthening trade winds and quite breezy locations. Uh, northeast winds, uh, 10 to 15, the whole and Leilani Estates area, Stronger at higher elevations, uh, 20 gusting to 30 in the National Park. These conditions will continue through the weekend uh, with trades expected in the, the next week, uh, we weakening a bit, but remaining quite breezy at least through the weekend, which will help to clear away some of the emissions and hopefully improve air quality in the population areas. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, we will now take questions. Reporters, please state your name and affiliation and only ask one question. We're going to have uh, an opportunity to follow back for any follow-up questions. In addition to Wendy, we have okay. Um, we have a series of other uh, USGS scientists on the call, uh, Emily Montgomery Brown, Wes Beelan, and Mike Poland. Um, but before we get to the questions, Wendy Stovall has uh, one more uh, additional update for you all. So I just wanted to mention that we did get some satellite imagery in um, comparing the summit 
area before and then after the two explosive events, and it looks like the uh, event, the overlook event, enlarged slightly, and there is a, a downdrop feature on the southeast edge of the Holly Mountain Mountain Crater, and there are people here that can address those questions. It's posted on the website, too. You'll be able to find it there in the multimedia section, photo chronology. Awesome. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Sarah, please open the line for a Q&A with the reporters. Thank you. Thank you so much. And this is for anyone at the USGS. Uh, you had issued a uh, release saying, turn to trusted resources for the Kilauea eruption because of the false rumors causing uh, anxiety. Um, and one of the rumors is that there's this possibility of Kilauea, uh, the land falling into the ocean, and that would create this biblical type tsunami. Can you specifically address that and your concern over these false rumors? Uh, this is Janet Babb with the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. I'll start by saying that we have addressed this on the uh, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory website homepage. Uh, as mentioned in that Volcano Watch article, it's, we, we explain that. It's um, in the news section of our homepage. Um, maybe uh, this is Wendy Stovall from the USGS. Um, the, there were a couple of people involved in writing that up, and Wes Thielen can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is this is a fairly uh, persistent rumor that uh, is come about from various sources, um, and uh, the the basic. The basic story is that there are there's no evidence for catastrophic failure of the volcano on the south side of the island. So Kilauea has never had a history in its in its uh, lifetime of catastrophic failure that would that would create as as you called it a, a biblical type of of scenario. Um, and so that's something that that we don't see in the past. We also can see in the motion of the south flank that it is moving as a block. It is not moving uh, differentially as if one part of it was, was shearing away from another. And so the south flank is moving stably as we would expect it to after such a large earthquake. And our next question comes from Tom Callis with the Hawaii Tribune Herald. Tom, your line is open. Yeah, this question is for Wendy. I apologize. I had trouble hearing when you were discussing about or talking about the new magma uh, reaching Fisher 21. Is that only con only samples that suggest that have been taken at Fisher 21, and is that Fisher still active? Um, th yeah, the only that there's only one sample that we've been able to analyze. It takes about 24 to 48 hours to, to do the analysis. So. Um, we we just got that data in right before this call, uh, so that is the only one that's been analyzed. And uh, as far as I know, hold on. Uh, yes, it is currently still erupting, but it's just producing very minor lava flows away from the vent at this point. Thank you. Next, we have Chris Leonard with KWXX and B97 Radio. Chris, your line is open. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that fissures uh, 17, 18, and 20 were much more voluminous. And we've seen pretty impressive video of Hawaii flows uh, from, I'm assuming, fissure 17 this morning. Uh, can you provide more information on how far these flows have traveled and, and what threat they may pose to uh, additional structures and or additional roadways or the anticipated path of those flows? Um, so I, I don't have any exact numbers of how far they have traveled from from what we gave you just a couple days ago. Uh, we're working on mapping that out and getting those calculations, but I can say that they have not traveled a significant distance um, from where they were. They seem to be more piling up on top of themselves right now. Both, both uh, fissures 17 and 20 are very broad. And so they're kind of taking up more space than they are extending in length right now. Our next question comes from Michael Phillips from Weatherboy. Your line is open. Hi, my question Hi. is for uh, Jessica. 
Uh, with the first blast, there was a report of a two-foot-wide rock that was ejected and landed in a parking lot. Can you clarify which parking lot was that? Was that the old Overlook parking lot that's been closed for a few years, or was that in the at the observatory? And then can you describe what does the observatory look like today? Is, it, is there just a fine covering of ash, or are there uh, pebbles and, and, and rocks littering the area? Hi, um, that's sort of a NPS question, but more of a USGS question. Um, this is Jessica again talking on behalf of the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Uh, the rocks were discovered by USGS scientists in an area that's been closed to the public for about 10 years now. So I'll let USGS um, talk about where exactly that those rocks were discovered. And as far as what the park looks like today, um, I think you're actually asking about the, the uh, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, which is USGS. But um, I am not in the park today, um, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what it looks like today. If there's somebody on the line that is actually in the park and can address, you know, any kind of ash layer, that would be great. Uh, this is Janet Babb, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. Uh, we're... I'm not at uh, HBO today, but based on photographs from yesterday and based on nearby areas, uh, you know, residential areas, uh, there was just a fine dusting of small um, particles, you know, a, gr a gritty ash, uh, but very, very uh, fine dusting, uh, no real accumulation at all. It was also raining, and the rain was very quickly washing it, washing it uh, away. As far as the boulder, that was found in the, the, the parking area of the uh, what one time was a place where visitors could park and walk out to the rim of Halima'oma'u. It was inside, within the caldera, in the closed area. Next we have Jennifer Kelleher with AP. Hi, can you elaborate on the boulders and rocks that were found um, in the closed area of the park and after which explosion, when were these um, rocks and boulder uh, found? Um, and I'll also have a couple of other follow-up questions I wanted to know. Um, uh, Jennifer, we're going to ask you... the new magma. Sure. Jennifer, yeah. if you could please just ask one question at a time, we'll circle back around. Regarding the rocks that were found in the Halima'oma'o parking area, we actually have a photograph on the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory website uh, with detailed information there. So I would refer you to the multimedia uh, or, or our um, chronology, our photochronology on the HBO website. And it'll be able to tell me when these rocks were found and from which explosion they came from? Yes. And measurements. But you can't, you can't just let us know quickly now what those details are? I'm going to the website to look. This is Wendy Silva. Sorry, what? I'm going to the website right now to look, so you, you'll have to be... The rock, sorry, there was a rock hurl. This is Wendy Stovall, USGS. Um, rock hurled from Overlook Crater during an explosive event last evening. Not which sure was? which was, uh, this was on May 16th, so it was overnight. Um, it was probably early in the morning on May 16th. And the rock broke apart on impact. It was probably about two feet long before it hit the ground. And it's a few hundred meters south, a few hundred yards south of the Overlook Crater at the Holly Mountain parking lot. So that's the, the parking lot that's been closed for 10 years. Hi, Sarah, could we get the next question, please? Yes, the next question comes from Luz Villarreal with CBS News. Your line is open. Yes, hi, thank you so much. Um, I'm sorry that I was I'm doing multiple stores today, and I got on this call a little late. Can you folks tell me if we're still at 21 Fishers? And um, how, I understand that number 17 kind of became active again. How many of those, if there's still just 21, how many of them are active now? Um, there's actually 22 fissures, and there's about six that are presently active. Activity did increase overnight, and 17 is, is definitely still active. Uh, 17 and 20 seem to be the most voluminous at this point. And the other news is that 
Fissure 21, one single sample that we took from Fissure 21 has a, a magma source that is closer in composition to what we were seeing at the summit and from Pu'u'o'o. So that is telling us that it's likely that the summit magma has now reached this area of eruption in the lower east drift zone, uh, and it, the lava flows and potential spattering will become more voluminous in that area. Thank you. Next, we have Damon Tucker with Big Island Now. Good morning. Um, on your 9 o'clock a.m. update this morning, you mentioned that there was 40 structures destroyed. Of those 40 structures that were destroyed, how many are actual housing units? Damon, that report was from Hawaii County Civil Defense or the County of Hawaii, so they will have that information. Thank you. And we have Sherry Bracken with Hawaii Public Radio and Mahalo Broadcasting. Hi there. Highway 11 status. Are the cracks same, getting bigger, and are you thinking you might close Highway 11? Hi, Sherry. It's Jessica from Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. At this time, there are no plans to close Highway 11. The cracks that we have on the road are passable. Thank you. And we have Chris Leonard with KWXX at B97 Radio. A uh, follow-up question to Sherry. She actually asked pretty much the same question I was going to ask, but uh, the, the cracks are passable at this point. Have you seen new cracks emerge in the last 24 hours, and are there still uh, steam emissions from, from any of those cracks in that area? Are you talking about Highway 11 or another part of the roadway, Chris? Uh, Highway 11. There are no, uh, as far as I've heard, no no steam coming out of those cracks at this time. And, and were there any additional cracks in the Highway 11 area in the last 24 hours that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of, Chris. And again, sorry, you guys, this is Jessica from Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. But we will certainly ask that question and um, get back to you. Thank you. As a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 from your phone and speak your name and affiliation clearly when prompted. We have Tom Callis with the Hawaii Tribune Herald next. Yeah, I think you guys are taking samples of the other, uh, well, from the other fishers as well. Um, were they taken at the same time as the one at Fisher 21? Um, do you have results in the same time period? Um, there, people are continuing to collect samples. Uh, the field crews that are out there 24 hours a day, I know that some samples have... have Oh, sorry, this is Wendy Stovall from the USGS. Um, so, it, again, it takes about 24 to 48 hours to analyze the samples that are coming in. Um, so we, we will probably give you an additional update tomorrow uh, on the 11 a.m. conference call about what we're seeing from the, the newer samples that have come out. We still only have just the one from Fisher 21. Thank you, Chris. Hi, Tom. This is Janet Babb. Um, please keep in mind there are considerable challenges to collecting these samples. Um, it's difficult field work right now with the fumes and with a lot of the spattering. So we're collecting samples as we can um, at different locations at a different time. Thank you. Next, we have Damon Tucker with Big Island Now. Yes. Has this geological event been given an official name yet, such as Lava Flow 61G or the June 27th Flow? Uh, Damon, this is Janet Babb at, uh, at HVO. Um, not as of yet. It's, it's under discussion right now. We're referring to the uh, activity in, in Lower Puna as the Lower East Drift Zone Eruption. Uh, but there's, other than that, that's, that's where we're at right now. We, we have stated definitively that 61G is, is over, it's, it's done. And how far away is the lava from the ocean at this point? Um, hi, this is Wendy Stovall, USGS. We do not have that number yet. Where people are working on the analysis of that as we speak. Thank you. Next, we have Mahalani Richardson with Hawaii News Now. Your line is open. 
Thanks, guys. Um, I know you addressed this in a, in a written statement, and I really appreciated that. Um, I wanted to know if, if just anyone from USGS can, can state why Kilauea, the explosive events at Kilauea are not like Mount St. Helens. Hi, this is Wendy Soval with USGS. Uh, so Kilauea and Mount St. Helens uh, are, are two different types of volcanoes. Kilauea is a shield volcano. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano. The magma is a, a different composition at each of these volcanoes. The type of magma that feeds Mount St. Helens has a higher silica content, so it's the, the magma itself as sitting in the magma storage region is uh, stickier, and when stickier magma erupts explosively, then it will produce higher uh, and more voluminous ash plumes. Uh, the explosive eruptions that we're seeing at the summit at Kilauea right now do not involve magma, as far as we can tell. These are water and hot rock explosions, um, so steam and hot rock explosions, and it's just a completely different uh, physical force that's that's causing these ash clouds to be formed. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thanks for dispelling the myths. We're we're trying to correct correct a, a national network as well. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have Dan Whitcomb from Reuters. Your line is open. Oh, thank you. I, I'm wondering if you can just tell me in, in sort of basic layman's terms what we can expect from the volcano, or obviously it's a bit of guesswork, but what we can expect in the next few days from the volcano, um, and, and also what what you're telling, what you would say to the residents who have been out of their homes, how how long um, or can they expect to be evacuated, or you know what what the future holds for them, the immediate future, if there's uh, if, if there's any. Uh, reassurances you can give them, or if it's, it's going to be a long-term event. Uh, thank you. Um, hi, this is Wendy Stovall from the USGS. So I cannot address the, um, the the latter question. I think that that is best addressed by the people at the Hawaii County Civil Defense. Um, we can provide some some of that guesswork that you j mentioned about what the next steps well, or the next uh, processes Actually, or right how the eruption will continue. Than, so yeah, there are some likely scenarios and, and some less likely scenarios. To keep it brief, I'll just go through what we think is the most likely thing to happen. Uh, in the lower East Rift Zone, because we believe that the summit magma has arrived, that indicates that there will be, and we have seen this overnight, where there is an increase in activity of the fissures, and there are more fissures being involved at the same time. That there is that newer magma is is just going to continue to erupt at the surface through these fissures, and they probably will be producing more voluminous um, lava flows and some additional spatter. Uh, I cannot say for sure how long that will continue at this time. Uh, but we do expect that to continue at least for the next few days. At the summit, uh, we also are expecting similar types of explosive events as the two that we saw on the prior two days. Uh, and then uh, we, some of our geophysicists are, and there's some on the phone now if you wanted to address them more specifically, they are trying to pin down what the precursory signals are for those explosive events, so we have a little bit better warning when those might occur. Um, does that help? Yes, it is helpful. Thank you. 